Good morning. My name is Lori. Welcome to my channel. We are quilters. Today we start a series of build a blocks. We are going to do the weather quilt blocks for the next five weeks because it includes five blocks. That these blocks translate well into many other projects. But I had a request to share the blocks with you. So I am going to share the blocks and the piecing and how to assemble them. It will be lots of fun. So let's get started. I'm going to show you the easiest block first. When I came up with this project, I decided that I needed to do more than just high and low temperature. That's a nice thought, but it is kind of, I, I don't know, it, that's, that's too easy and simplistic for me. So my blocks needed to have five block parts that I could color. One for high temp, one for low temp, one for cloud cover, one for precipitation, and one for wind. Now this is what I know. When I picked my colors, I didn't really think about, oh, these two could overlap and I could have two light blues in the same block or sometimes even three light blues in the same, well, that's not gonna happen, none in rain, but that's sometimes three light blues in the same block. So I didn't really think about that, and I did my own little interpretation of Beaufort's scale, and only one time have I used that black one so far, and it's June. So there's the color key that I chose and used for the whole thing. So some things look very different. So the five blocks are the 5440 or fight block that I use for when we're at the West Virginia house. And I've made color sheets for each one so that I know where to put the cloud cover, the wind, the high, the low, and the precipitation. So, and then I cut those apart and use those. This is the one we are going to do for today. No room at the end, and it says at April's, but it's when we're at anybody else's house or staying in a hotel that we're in the same area so that I know we've, we're traveling, we're on the road. April is my sister, by the way. So my, I, and on this page, I did the block and the example so this could very easily translate into other things, very easily. And then the, you just recently saw this one on Friday, I did a, an example block for the 23rd of April. And there it is, the Michigan cabin block. When we're here in Michigan, that is the block. And you can see that the high temperature is here, the low temperature is here, cloud cover makes the points, wind, and precipitation is these four little corners. So that is my Michigan block. When you look at the quilt assembled, you'll be able to see that. This is the, it's a block called Salem, and this is when we're at Jeremiah's house. And I knew that I wouldn't use this block a lot because we, usually only come and stay at his house when we have the water turned off at the cabin and it's very cold. Like at Christmas time and February when my granddaughter's birthday is. So I knew I wouldn't use a lot of these because it does have a lot of little pieces. It is a beautiful block when made up. And you can see there's my little color sheets. Scattered points are travel days, and I knew that we wouldn't be doing too much traveling. And my criteria for travel days is when I wake up in one spot and I am going to sleep in another spot. That is a travel day. Or I travel hundreds of miles in between the wake up and sleep. It is a travel day when we're on the road. So there are the blocks that we have. And I am going to show you, like I said, this one first. I have a couple of them cut up for when we were in Virginia on a vacation in April. 
over what most people see as a spring break. So let me get that out and show it to you. Here's what I have in my basket, the little sheet. And I use this sheet with the date on it. And I use my weather chart and I color in. Then I sit down and I have a little coloring session. So I know that the highs will be down through the middle. Precipitation makes up most of this quilt. Lows, cloud cover, and wind. Whereas some other ones, if I were to do this again, I would make it more proportional. So let me lay out this block for you. Push those up out of the way so we can see. Now, this block comes out to, like I said, six and a half. And it, because it has so many smaller pieces, it looks so stretched out when it is laying out. And I did do, I did try to economize on the pieces so that I wouldn't have so many pieces. Isn't this, this is going to be cute. Cute, cute, cute. Oops, don't need an extra one of those over there hanging in midair. And then we have cloud cover. And last but not least, the wind. So because of these pieces, you can't necessarily piece it in four patches, but some things can be patched or pieced in four patches, like this corner and this corner can be four patches. Some things just need to be done in rows, like these in rows, and then add the four patch. These in a row, add the four patch. These just all in a row, and then you join all the pieces together. It's a very simple, very simple block but very graphic. So let's get to some sewing. And if you look closely, I have put things in piles. So these are the same on the bottom half of the block. These are the same on the bottom half of the block. And the middle two rows are the same, just flipped. So I have put them on my little board that way, and I will take them over to the sewing machine now. Let's go. Let's see. <laughs> you feel about this but I hate picking apart the pieces but it's not the small pieces that are the difficult with this block it's the making sure they're in the right place and I know that these two sets are the same and these two sets are the same but I still don't want to have to pick anything apart so I'm going to lay my block here beside me and I'm going to lay it out again so that I know what gets fastened to where? Because I can add in that, the other set of blocks here. And I know that that's going to go that way. And I know that the pink will go here. And the green will go here. And so it's easier if I just lay it out before I start fastening things together and make a mess. So I know the pink will go on the outside, blue, yellow, blue. So I'm just going to lay it out here again, and I'm going to very carefully fasten those pieces together. Once I'm done sewing all the pieces in rows, I will take it and press them open so they are easier to deal with. So let me sew some more. Speed piece we get. Oh, and look 
what I did here. I flipped these around backwards. I'll be back in a moment as soon as I'm done picking that out and fixing it. I hate when that happens. Here's the block all finished, ready to go, but I need to keep track of what is what until all the blocks for the month of April are finished. So I sew my little color sheets on the back and that way I can sort them at, when I have them all done and it's not a problem and they come off very easily. So there it is. All done. Yay! Easy, easy. As long as you keep the blocks straight and don't reverse any of the pieces. Give it a try. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Join me for Blab Fest Friday. See you then.